Hi boys and girls, this is Mrs. Lemoyne again, and today we're doing Unit 6, Lesson 9, Use Equivalent Expressions. You're going to use equivalent expressions to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. We're going to decide if each statement is true or false for our warm-up, and we're going to be prepared to explain our reasoning. All right, so I have a fourth added to two-fourths equals three-fourths. So I notice that they're all in fourths. So yes, I'm going to say that this is a true statement because one-fourth plus two-fourths will give me three-fourths. Ha! So this statement says that one-half plus one-fourth is the same as two-fourths. Well, I have different denominators, don't I? So if I were going to add one-half plus one-fourth, I would have to have the same denominator in, able to, in order to be able to add them. So I know that I can make this two a four, so I'm going to go ahead and copy the four down. I don't need to change that, right? But I can have to change this to something that has a fourth. So what can I multiply times two to get to four? I can multiply two. Whatever I multiply the top by, I have to multiply the bottom by. So 2 times 1 is 2. Now that they're all fourths, I can add the fourths together. 2 fourths plus 1 fourth is 3 fourths. So I'm going to say, nope, this is not true. This is false. I could also show that on a number line if I had equivalent number lines, right? All right, here I have the same problem, don't I? I'm adding fourths, or I'm subtracting, sorry. I'm taking halves away from fourths. So in order to do that, I'm going to have to have the same denominator. So I'm going to go ahead and stack them up. And just like in this one, I know that I can make a 2 of 4, so I know I'm going to multiply this times 2 and this times 2, so that 1 half is equivalent to 2 fourths, right? That was the same thing I did up here. Now, I don't have to change this fourth at all, do I? Three fourths. Now I can take three fourths and subtract two fourths, and I end up with one fourth. Here, what they did was they just subtracted across and didn't care that the fourths weren't the same. So no, this is again false. And that's how I know, right? That's how I know. Okay. Let's move on to our first activity where we're going to continue to explain equivalent fractions and how that's going to help us to add and subtract fractions. All right. Explain or show why each expression is equivalent to 2 thirds plus 10 twelfths. All right. For me, what I would do hmm, is I would take 2 thirds and 10 twelfths. And I need to make them both twelfths. So what could I do to multiply by 3? I know that 3 times 4 is 12. So I'm going to multiply this times 4. Yeah, 8 twelfths is the same as 2 thirds, right? So now I can add 10 twelfths and get 18 twelfths. For this one, is 2 thirds the same as 4 sixths? And 5 6 the same as 10 twelfths? Hmm, that's a good question. Well, let's see. Could I make, let's, let's set this up again, 2 thirds times what is going to get me 4 6? If I multiply both by 2, right? But 5 6, what do I have to do to that? Right? No, I didn't have 5 6 first, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, there we go. Ten twelfths. Twelfths. What do I have to do to ten twelfths to get five sixths? So that I can prove that this and this are equivalent. So what do I have to do? I have to divide, don't I? This time I'm going to divide. What do I have to divide by to get five? Let's divide by two. What do I have to divide 12 by to get 6? I have to divide by 2. So if I multiply or divide by the same number, um, I'm going to get an equivalent fraction. So that means that 2 thirds is the same as 4 sixths, 
and 2 thirds is the same as 8 twelfths. Two thir 10 twelfths is the same as 5 sixths. So I can do all kinds of work with that, right? And now it says to evaluate 2 thirds plus 10 twelfths, and I already did that. Look at that. I already did that work, didn't I? I changed 2 thirds to 8 twelfths, and I added 8 twelfths plus 10 twelfths, so this becomes 8 twelfths plus 10 twelfths, and I know that that is 18 twelfths. I could also say that that is, how many times does 12 go into 18? It goes in one time with how many left over? 6, 6 twelfths. What's the same as 6 twelfths? 1 half, because 6 is half of 12, isn't it? All right. So I could either multiply the top and the bottom by the same or divide the top and this bottom by the same. So even though I'd already done all this work, could I have just done this and get 9 sixths? Is that the same as 1 and a half? 6 goes into 9 one time with 3 left over. Is that the same as this? Yeah, because 3 is half of 6. So instead of doing all this over again, I could have just looked at this expression, couldn't I? Wow. Math is so cool. All right, let's see our next task. How did you know that 8 twelfths plus 10 twelfths was equaled to 2 thirds plus 10 twelfths? Well, again, we could divide each 1 third into 4 equal parts. Those parts are twelfths, and there are 8 of them. Or, as Ms. Lemoyne showed, right, how are we going to make 8 twelfths the same as 2 thirds? Right? We're dividing by 4 each time, or we multiply this by 4 over 4. Same thing for this. That's the same anyway, though, isn't it? Why is the expression 8 twelfths plus 10 twelfths helpful? Well, because we can only add twelfths to twelfths, right? The denominators have to be the same. Which expression did you choose to find the sum? Well, we did both, didn't we? We did all of them. All right, now, oh my goodness, here we go. We have a new one. We're going to find the value of the expression 16 twelfths minus 3 sixths. And then we're going to compare our strategy to the, a strategy of a person in the class. What is the same and what is different? Okay, so I need to make this number twelfths or I need to make this sixths. So what should I do? I want to make them the same. So I think that I'm going to make this sixth. So 16 twelfths. How do I make that? I'm going to have to divide by something to get that to be sixth. Then I can subtract three sixths. So I think that six divided by two. And then I can divide this by two as well, right? Six divided by two is, I'm sorry, 12 divided by two is six. 16 divided by two is eight. And now I can subtract 8 minus 3. This is 6, Miss Lemoyne. Why did I write a 3 there? 3, 6, right? That was the original, 3, 6. So 8 minus 3 I know is 5, and they're all 6s. I could have made this 3, 6, twelfths, right? If I did it that way, let me get a pink pen out and show you how that would look. So 16 twelfths is going to be the same, but in order to subtract, I'm going to have to make this 3 sixths. I'm going to have to multiply it by something to get some twelfths. So what do I multiply 6 times to get twelfths? I get 6 times 2 is 12, so I'm going to multiply 3 times 2, which is 6. And then I'm going to subtract 16 twelfths. And what do I get? 16 minus 6 is 10 twelfths. Well, those two fractions look different, don't they? But what could I do to this to get to twelfths? I can multiply times 2 over 2, and I get 10 twelfths. So 5 6 is the same as 10 twelfths. I could also look over here, right, and how could I make this a sixth? Well, I could divide by 2 and get 5 6. So I know that 10 twelfths and 5 sixths are equivalent fractions. They are exactly the same. 
All right, let's see what they ask us next. Oh, goodness. How did you find the value of 16 twelfths minus 3 twelfths, 6? Well, we just showed that, didn't we? How are the strategies for finding the value of the expressions the same? So you're going to compare with your classmates. How are they the same and how are they different? Why is it important to have the same denominator again? Well, we can only take like from like, right? I cannot subtract yards from feet unless I convert one into the other. I can subtract yards from yards. I can subtract feet from feet. I can subtract sixth from sixth or twelfths from twelfths, but I can't subtract twelfths and sixes. They have to be the same. All right. Grow plants. Here we go. Jada's plant, Jada and Andre compare the growth of their plants. Jada's plant grew one and three-fourths inches since last week. Andre's plant grew seven-eighths inches. How much more did Jada's plant grow? Explain or show your reasoning. Okay, well, let's see. Let's see what they're asking first. Jada's plant grew one and three-fourths inches since last week, and Andre's grew seven-eighths inches. How much more means that we have to do some subtraction, right? We're going to have to do some subtraction. So first of all, which one is bigger, seven-eighths or one and three-eighths? What do you think? Which one is bigger? Well, seven-eighths is less than one. So I know that 1 and 3 fourths is going to be the bigger number because it has a 1 in it. 7 eighths is going to be the smaller number. Now, I have to subtract these two, and what we've been talking about, right, is that I have to have like denominators, don't I? I have to have like denominators. I could divide 8 by 2 and get fourths, but then 7 doesn't easily divide by 2, does it? So I think it makes more sense to make this eighths. So we need this to be eighths over here. In order to do that, can I leave this an improper fraction? I mean, a, a mixed number. I think I can. I'm just going to be thinking about this fraction here, right? So this fraction here. I'm going to make this an eighth by multiplying times two. Two times three is six eighths, and two times uh, four is eight. Okay, so it's six eighths. But I can't forget about this one. So now I have to subtract that. Now that is going to be difficult, isn't it? What could I do? to help me figure this out. Hmm, what strategy would you use? I could make it improper, but then I would end up with a very large numerator, wouldn't I? And then I would have to figure that out. What I could do, what if I turned this one into a fraction and added it to this fraction? So what fraction would I use that I could add easily? So I'm going to add it in. So what if I made this one 8 over 8? Is 8 over 8 1? So all I've done is converted this one into 8 over 8, which equals 1, doesn't it? Now I can add them together and say that this is 14. 6 plus 8 is 14 eighths. It's going to stay eighths. Now I can subtract 7 eighths, can't I? Yeah, that was complicated. I had to turn this 1 into a fraction, add it to the fraction to make 14 eighths. 14 eighths is the same as 1 and 6 eighths. It's the same. If I went over here and I said 8 goes into 14 one time with 6 left over, that's what I would have, right? It's the same. All I've done is I've combined it by changing that 1 into a fraction that I could add together, and now I can subtract. Um, I'm going to keep the eighths, because it has to stay eighths, 
14 minus 7 is 7 eighths. So 1 and 3 fourths minus 7 eighths is 7 eighths. So Jada's plant grew, let's write that, Jada's plant grew 7 eighths inch more than Andre's. All right. There's a lot of different ways you could have done that, but that's the way that I thought about it. Okay. Today we used equivalent expressions to add and subtract fractions with unlike denominators. Describe to your partner how you would find the value of this expression. So the way I would do that is I would take this number and make it twelfths. Because if I divided this to make it fourths, well, I could do that too, couldn't I? So let's do it both ways. So I could take 15 twelfths and, oops, divide by something to get fourths. So I'm changing this number. What could I divide by to get fourths? Well, 12 divided by 3 gives me fourths, and 15 divided by 3 gives me fifths. Now I can subtract uh, let's rewrite this, 5 fourths minus 3 fourths, and I would get 2 fourths or 1 half. Now, I could do that a different way. Remember, I, could, I have a choice. I could change 3 fourths, sorry about that, I could change 3 fourths, couldn't I? So I could change 3 fourths, let's write it down here, 15 twelfths, minus three-fourths, I could make three-fourths twelfths, and then I could subtract twelfths from twelfths. So what could I multiply four times to get twelve? That would be three, so three times three is nine. Fifteen minus nine is six twelfths. Six is half of twelve, which is the same as half, so we got the same answer. All of these are equivalent. I had choices about how I could do that. Maybe your partner did it this way, maybe you did it this way, or vice versa. Good job. Okay. How did you decide which common denominator to use when you are adding or subtracting unlike denominators? Well, I have to make sure that I can convert one to the other, right? So I thought about this 15 twelfths, and I knew that I could multiply or divide both by 3 and it would come out evenly. So that's how I could choose to just divide by 12 here, I'm sorry, divide here, or multiply this one to get 12s. So it really just depends on the factors and what works. Oh, here's our cool down. All right, so again, I could either change my 12s to 4s or I could change my 4s to 12s. I think that I'm going to change the 12s to 4s. So I'm going to stack them up. 9 twelfths minus 1 fourth. So remember, I am, my goal is to divide this by something so that I have a fourth. And I know that if I divide 12 by 3, I get fourth. And I know that 9 divided by 3 is 3. If the numerator was not a number divisible by 3, I would have changed this to twelfths. But I don't have to do that. So 3 minus 1 is 2 fourths or one half. All right. I guess I could show you what would happen, I'll choose a different color, if I chose to convert the one fourth. So again, I'm going to stack up my subtraction problem. This time I'm going to make this a twelfth, so I could subtract. What times four is twelve? Now I can subtract twelfths from twelfths. 9 minus 3 is 6 twelfths. 6 is half of 12, so that's the same as 1 half. So guess what? 1 half, 6 twelfths, and 2 fourths are all equivalent fractions. All right, let's see. I think that's it for today, girls. And boys, thank you so much for joining me, and I hope that you join me next time. Remember to like and subscribe.